Hi guys, welcome to another activity. So this activity is about uh, Trinket, which is an online tool that we used for computer modeling in this course. You probably used it already, or you used GlowScript in Physics 153 to model situations involving mechanical systems. This semester we're going to expand our repertoire a little bit and include electrical and magnetic interactions in our modeling projects. So let's see how this works. There's a website that I cooked up, just a very simple website called 3d.spvi.net, which when you lo load the page is going to have a program that looks like this. It's quite simple. It just draws a box. And basically the idea is to have a starting place. So you don't have to create an account. You don't have to log in. You can just go here and start programming. So that's what I want to show you. Um, I'm going to just delete all this and paste in some constants that we need for this project that I had sort of pre in my preset in my clipboard. Um, there's the universal gravitational constant. There's the distance between the Earth and the Moon in meters. There's the radius of the Earth in meters, the radius of the Moon in meters, the mass of the Earth in kilograms, and the mass of the Moon in kilograms. So those are the basic bits of detail that we're going to need. What I want to do today is to model the Moon orbiting the Earth. Uh, it's a very simple problem. It's actually very similar to the problem we're going to be dealing with in our first actual project that you'll turn in for credit, which is the um, classical orbit of positronium. So positronium is a, ma is a material. It's a real material made of matter and antimatter. We'll learn about that next time. But uh, what I need to do here is to make a model of the Earth. So I'm going to go ahead and create a sphere to represent the Earth. I want the radius to be the radius of the Earth, and I want the color to be blue. So I hope you remember how all this works. Um, if, you, if you've never done vPython programming in GlowScript or in Trinket, let me know, and I'll try to point out some uh, tutorials to sort of get you started. I'm, I presume most of you guys, when you took Physics 153, you did a little bit of this programming, so it's not completely foreign. Uh, let's make the moon. Um, I want to put the moon above the Earth, so I'm going to give it a position. Positions have to be vectors, so it's going to have no x component. It'll have a y component equal to the distance between the Earth and the moon, and no z component. But then it needs a radius. Let's go ahead and make that the radius of the moon. Uh, it needs a color. Let's go ahead and make that white, just so it's easier to see. And I'm going to go ahead and run this guy. <coughs> and it, you may realize here, it's kind of hard to see. There's the moon, and there's the Earth. Let me zoom in a little bit. Maybe shift down. Let's see, where did it go? There it is. OK, there's the moon up there. It's pretty hard to see, though, because it the distance between the Earth and the Moon is so uh, large compared to their radii. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cheat. I'm just going to go in here and make the radius of the sphere 10 times the actual radius of the objects themselves to exaggerate the size. And that way, now I can see the darn thing. So it's just recognize that these that's not a scale model now. The size of the Earth and the size of the Moon are 10 times bigger than the real thing, but at least we're just doing that to make it easier to see. Okay. Now, what I want to do is to estimate the period of the Moon's orbit. Now, you may remember that the governing equation is that the net force is equal to the rate of change of the momentum. What I'd like to do is to have a circular orbit, so that means that the uh, dp dt is m times the velocity squared over r. You probably remember that. In this case, it's going to be the magnitude of the velocity of the moon. It'll be the mass of the moon and the distance between the Earth and the moon, or what's going to go in there. And that's going to be equal to the net force. But of course, you remember that the net force in magnitude is the mass of the Earth times the mass of the moon times the universal gravitational constant divided by the distance between the Earth and the Moon squared. So if I put all that together, let's see if we can 
sort this out and v squared. Okay, so that means that um, the mass of the moon is going to cancel. Do you see how that works? And um, what I'm going to end up with is the magnitude of the velocity. Let's go ahead and work this out. It's going to be g times me divided by uh, rem, and then I've got to take a square root. Okay, I think I've done that correctly. And uh, then the period is going to be the circumference divided by the velocity. So that's 2 times pi times rem divided by the magnitude of the velocity. Okay, so let's just, just for fun, let's print out the magnitude of the velocity and let's print out the period. So all I'm going to do is run this code and it's printing out, it says it's a thousand meters per second and it's two million seconds. Hmm, two million seconds. Let's see. Well, uh, I happen to know a year. Let's just, we need to validate this. Let's see, a year is about 3.15 times 10 to the seventh seconds. Um, Let's uh, divide this by t year. Let's see what that looks like. 0.07. So let's multiply by 12. <coughs> and it's approximately 90%. It's 90% of a, of a month. So if I multiply that by... Uh, Actually, let's multiply it by 365 days. Well, you get the idea. I think that's close enough. It's uh, it's about a month, a month, right? That's that's about how long it takes. So um, this should be 3.15, by the way. Is that better? Yeah, that's that's even getting better. Okay, so I think we'll take that. Let's go ahead and. Uh, do some calculations. So let's say uh, dt is t divided by 100. That means we're going to divide the orbit into 100 pieces, and each time step will be a hundredth of that. We're going to start t out at 0, and then uh, let's say while t is less than 3 periods, I'm going to say rate 30. So we're going to run the thing at about 30 frames a second. And there's a series of calculations we need to do in order to calculate this orbit. First, we need to calculate the force. Then we need to calculate the uh, change in momentum. Then we need to calculate the new momentum. Then we need to calculate the new position. So it's going to be moon.pos equals something. So let's, uh, but before we calculate the net force, we need to calculate the r vector. Um, so let's do. Let's start with the r vector. So the r vector is the vector that goes from the Earth to the Moon. That's the we're calculating the force on the Moon. So the r vector goes from the Earth to the Moon. So that's the position of the Moon minus the position of the Earth, right? Then the net force is going to be minus g times the mass of the Earth times the mass of the Moon times the r hat vector, which is going to be r dot norm. <coughs> In vPython, the way you get a unit vector is use the norm method of that object. And then we're going to divide by r, uh, we're going to divide by r dot mag squared. Okay. Then the change in momentum, of course, is the momentum principle. That's just f net times dt. The new momentum is going to be the old momentum plus the change in momentum, okay? And the new position is going to be the old position plus the change in position, which is the momentum times the change in time divided by the mass, right? Because the momentum divided by the mass is the velocity, and the velocity times the change in time is the change in position. Now, the only thing we haven't got here, I noticed that we never set a momentum so I've got a set of momentum. Let's make the momentum a vector. It's going to be minus the mass of the moon times the magnitude of the velocity in the x direction 
and then no y and no z. So the moon is going to go counterclockwise around the earth. Okay. Now the other thing I need to do is to start is to increment the time. So t equals t plus dt. Boom. Okay. So this is a model of the moon going around the earth. You calculate the force, the change in momentum, and then you update the position. You're going to do something very similar to this with the positronium. Let's go ahead and look at it. And there it is. The moon's going around the earth. It goes around once. It goes around twice. It's going to go around almost three times. Boom. And then it's going to stop. So that's because we said if t is less than three times the period, that looks right. So there we have it our moon earth model. Now once you're done you want to go up here to share and you want to click link and then that link right there is what you're going to include in your project and uh, now this will be different than the link that you started with because you've modified the program right so um, this will be your own personal unique link that is going to be your program as you modified it and you post that into your document that you submit to either ACE or to Critic or whatever you're using for grading and and that'll work so that's all I have for you